It's about time. What's up, everybody? My name is Dan with Hobbies and Happiness, and we're finally talking about the Disney Lorcana news. So let's just jump right in. Last week, IGN released an article detailing the, re the release time frame and announcing the product lines that we're going to see when Disney Lorcana releases. So the, the first thing, let's actually go through the IGN article very quickly. Um, so here's the article. Link will be in the description if you want to check it out. It's super brief, but essentially says that Lorcana is releasing August 2023. Now, um, it is going to release August 18th for LGSs, but two weeks later for big box stores, which is awesome. Um, it's great to see that Lorcana is already prioritizing the local game stores and hobby shops. And that's something as a card community you love to see. You absolutely love to see that. And so I really hope that that is going to continue um, in the future. But so far, it's a it, it's a start of good things to come. So that's the first thing they announced. The second thing, second paragraph states, IGN has learned exclusively that Disney Lorcana will be released in the United States, Canada, UK, France, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, starting August with Disney Lorcana, the first chapter. So the first set is going to be called the first chapter, which we knew. So if we head over to Twitter, uh, this is the Disney Lorcana's uh, Twitter page. Um, and so they, they released this on the same day. This is the product line. But before we even get into the product line, so this is where they, they announce August 18th for LGSs and then September 1st for Big Box. Um, but the second thing here, it says at launch, Lorcan will be available in the US, Canada, UK, France, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. Um, and, then, and then they state they're publishing in English, French, and German. And then they say here which languages are available to you will depend on where you're purchasing Lorcana. So not a lot of languages to start. So I've mentioned this before. I, normally, this is not something I really look at. Because again, being in America and an English speaker, that's not something that I typically have to worry about. However, when you talk about first world problems, right? Like I get it, trust me, I understand. But when you're talking about a brand like Disney that has a global appeal and such a massive reach, this is something that typically you wanna look at. So it's, um, I don't know the reasoning for just for the languages and where they're releasing it have no idea um my, my what i did think initially was being not being released in asia i wonder if weiss schwartz has anything to do with it uh because my understanding is weiss schwartz does have a license for using disney ips in their game so i don't know if that has anything to do with it or not so time will tell we'll see um but that i wanted to mention that first and so let's head back over to the ign article the big thing that I wanted to look at from the IGN article was just the artwork. So if we take a look at the artwork, we see Sorcerer Mickey. I love I love all of this artwork. I believe Nicholas Cole it was the artist for all of these pieces. Uh, don't quote me on that. But again, if you want to check out a channel who does dives a lot into the art, you need to check out the Lumiteers. But with Sorcerer Mickey, you can see the brooms in the background is very awesome. And then you have Simba. Big fan of this artwork as well. Um, Simba looks a little bit like Mufasa here with with his stature. And then you see the other animals in the background. And then we also see Moana um, as well. Uh, again, a, a lot of these poses seem to be pretty, they're pretty much very similar, just the character right in the middle. Uh, I'll be interested to see if art the artwork Okay, changes a little bit from card to card, uh, but so far on all these characters, the the poses seem to be pretty similar across the board. So interesting to see if that's going to change at all. Then we see Aladdin. Now Aladdin here, as you can tell, he is he's not in his traditional uh, costume from the movie. So there's a lot been a lot of talk about Dreamborn, Storyborn, and Floodborn. I'm not even going to comment on any of that because I have no clue. I don't know what Floodborne means. I don't know what uh, Storyborn means. And I don't know what Dreamborn means. I have no clue. Um, and honestly, there's there's plenty of other folks in, within the community who have their thoughts and their ideas. And honestly, some of them are probably right. But that's just not something that it, it does interest me. But um, it's not something I'm even going to speculate on. Um, but all I know is Aladdin looks really cool. So his you can see he's got the ruby. Um, I mean, medallion is it's not really medallion, but it's the it's the symbol from the color on his on his clothing. So that's very interesting. And then we also see next we see Princess Aurora uh, again. 
So it looks like Princess Aurora is some side of some sort of sorceress or wizard here. Um, I, I, so again, until we get more in the lore and we know what's going on here, all, all I have are questions. Please, please, Disney Lorcana give me answers and then we see maleficent uh, again fan fan of the artwork i really like the artwork here for maleficent but that that's kind of all the artwork that we see from the article again check the link in the description if you want to see more all right and then if we head over to Lorcana's website they did update their website um so they announced all the products that, that are going to be uh released at product launch so let's go through this real quick now Real quick, one of the things we see here is we see another character. We see the Evil Queen. We don't see her on a card. We just see the artwork here. So interested to see where Evil Queen is going to show up um, and what and what her card's going to be or if she's going to be on multiple cards. But so far, again, I love the artwork. So again, stating coming fall 2023. Um, so we have the products. Excuse me, I'm dealing with a little bit of a sore throat here but we're gonna work through it guys. So the first product that, that they touch on is the starter decks. So to play Disney Lorcan, each player will need a deck of 60 cards. So we have confirmation that decks are going to be 60 cards. Now, what that says to me, 60 card decks, that's a decent sized deck, okay? Um, again, 60 cards, I think Magic the Gathering. What's in Magic the Gathering? Lands, so resources are in the deck. We have no clue what the resource system is gonna be like. I'm, I mean, I'm open for anything, right? Right. As long as it's designed well and works, then I, I am game. I'm just interested to see what's going to happen. But again, with a deck of 60 cards, um, I'm interested to see if resources are going to be included in that deck. My initial thought is yes. Um, again, but that's just based off of the 60 card deck. So, so be interested to see what happens with that. So these decks, we have three decks, okay? You have Amber and Amethyst with Moana and Sorcerer Mickey. You have Emerald and Ruby with Corel Deville and Aladdin. And then you have Sapphire and Steel with Aurora and Simba. So each of these starter decks, okay? Again, what we know, two colors. Each deck can, can be at maximum two colors, okay? So we've got our two color combos here from uh, two color, two color combos. L listen to me over here. Uh, color combinations, there we go. I, I guess it's still technically combo, right? <laughs> but so it states each starter deck is going to include one starter deck of 60 cards, including two foils, two foil cards of the characters on the package front. So when you buy Moana and, and Mickey, you know you're going to get a foil Moana and a foil Sorcerer Mickey. 11 game tokens, more than a second, uh, a rule book, and then one booster pack containing 12 randomized cards. So um, I, I like that your starter deck, you're getting the actual deck, but you're also getting a booster. That's kind of a nice touch, okay? What are the game tokens? We have no idea, okay? No clue what these game tokens are gonna be for, okay? But the fact that they're giving you 11, huh, I, I'm, I'm interested and intrigued, but we're gonna get to that. They touch on that more in another product, so. The next thing they touch on is the booster packs. Um, so when they touch, when they tell you the booster packs, we know each booster pack is going to contain, I believe it was 12 cards, okay? Um, so you have six commons, you have three uncommons, two rare, super rare, or legendary, and one foil. So uh, based off of that, we know the rarity system. Common, uncommon, rare, super rare, and then legendary, okay? Now that foil slot could be any rarity, most, uh, again, most likely, based off of all the other trading card games and kind of how their booster packs are set up. Um, but, uh, and, and again, having those two rare slots is, is nice as well. Um, so you've got three rarities that are quote unquote rare, again, rare-ish, right? Um, so, but one thing that we don't know, we don't know the pull rates. So we don't know what the pull rates are gonna be for the rare, super rare, or the legendaries, okay? Um, and then just how um, common or uncommon, for lack of a better word, that those rarities are going to be in the booster packs and in the boxes, okay? But again, this is great information to know um, off the bat. So the next thing that we see here, this next product, is the gift set. So this is interesting. So the gift set kind of um, kind of gives us gives me vibes of Pokemon. There's Pokemon uh, products out there that are very similar to this, okay? So the gift set includes two collectible oversight size full cards which let's be honest who honestly collects those okay there's a product in here that they kind of 
give you opportunity to collect those but guys let me know in the comments down below did you do you collect those because i know they've had them for magic um i believe they have have had them for pokemon in the past but did you guys ever col actually collect those let me know I, i'm interested to know okay but it says gift set includes two collectible oversized foils and two playable foil game cards in addition to the game tokens and four boosters so the gift set you get two of those oversized foils you get two playable foil cards you get 34 four game tokens and then four boosters so each booster again containing those 12 cards now this gift set okay we see hades and we see mulan new characters on new cards that we did not know so let's actually get into that here quickly so again hades and mulan look at hades okay there's there's difference here between hades and mulan okay um do you see if you look at the cost of Hades, there is no inkwell or whatever that, that is behind the cost area. Again, we're pretty sure it's cost of the card, okay? What does that mean? We ha we don't know, but that is similar to the what's found on the Dragonfire card. So again, interesting, but let's look at the cards. We know what these cards are. Zoom enhance, zoom enhance, zoom enhance. Boom, here's Hades. Hades, King of Olympus. He's a floodborne villain king deity. Four subtypes. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Again, having mo more of these subtypes just opens up uh, creative ideas uh, for deck building. Okay, so four subtypes. First villain, uh, I believe it's the first villain we've seen. I'm sorry, no, that's not. Uh, first king and deity, I believe. So Hades costs eight, has the ability shift six. You can pay six to play this on top of one of your characters named Hades. That shift ability, I'm really, really, really interested. Like this seems like this is going to be a, a really big thing within the lore of the game. All right. But it has this ability, Sinister Plot. This character gets plus one pip. We don't know what that is for every other villain character you have in play. So we know oh, also Hades is a six, seven. All right. And, and Amber. All right. But. That's not what really matters. The thing that really matters is we know that these pips, whatever these are, mean something. What do they mean? We don't know. The prevailing theory out there is that is going to be your win condition. You need to have so many out on board at a certain time uh, in the game to be able to win. Um, but we don't know. So the other character we know is Mulan. So we look at Mulan, five cost, Imperial Soldier, Storyborn, Hero, Princess, four, five. Has the ability to lead by example during your turn whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge your other characters get plus one pip whatever that is this turn so the fact that it's this turn that kind of gives a clue that those are going to have uh they're gonna have something to do on your turn it doesn't make sense that mulan's gonna buff buff those buff that stat line for each character and then you lose it on your opponent's turn so for example like if you need to collect a certain amount of lore or whatever that is okay uh there's a there uh, a lot of, many in the community think those are called lore lore points again we don't know but that's a good theory i do like that but if the if what you needed to do was collect a certain uh, number of lore points and have that on your opponent's turn, the fact that Mulan buffs buffs that stat on your turn and then you lose it on your opponent's turn, doesn't really make sense that the game is gonna check that stat on your opponent's turn. It makes sense that it's gonna check it on your turn. So um, we, were, we, we were talking and we thought it was gonna be checked on your opponent's turn to give your opponent an opportunity to respond essentially but that theory kind of goes out the window with mulan but again still so many questions i don't have any answers i'm sorry guys so but that's what we've got in the gift set again what are those tokens my thing with these tokens i think again i think it is a good um, thing that points to that those pips lore whatever it is mean something uh, big in the game and you need to track how many you have so the next the next thing we have is the Illumineer's Trove, the ultimate treasure for both collectors and players. Illumineer's Trove includes a full art storage box, two deck boxes, which is weird, kind of, I'm not surprised, eight booster packs, a player's guide, and more. So Trove, you get a storage box, you get two deck boxes. I can't say I'm surprised that they are milking this for all it's worth, for lack of a better term, right? As card game players, we know we love our shinies. We love deck boxes. We love storage boxes. We love foils. There's a lot of accessories that TCG players love, right? And deck boxes is one of them. So I think this is where Lorcan is going to make a good chunk of money is just off of the accessories. A little bit surprised that they're not um, 
uh, like sending that out to like Ultra Pro or another company to license it essentially. Um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see the quality. Like the, the big thing is going to be the quality. Interested to see what the quality is going to look like. So you have a storage box, two deck boxes, eight booster packs, 15 game tokens, and then a player's guide. So additionally, let's scroll down a little bit and then they have more accessories. So they have, they're going to have card sleeves, deck boxes, play mats in the portfolio. Play mats, they have mentioned, but they do say here that the first play mats are going to have Maleficent, Maui, and Mickey Mouse. So we have Maui, but we haven't seen any artwork yet for Maui. Um, so again, the big thing that, that we, in the community, we're talking a little bit surprised about the card sleeves and the deck boxes and this portfolio, this portfolio is very interesting. It states players can safeguard their collection with portable card portfolios, which hold 64 standard cards, as well as eight oversized cards. The first season or kind of card portfolios will feature stitch and the queen and the queen. So like eight oversized cards. I mean, I think they're leaning into the oversized cards, but honestly, guys, leave me a, leave a comment down below. Do you keep those oversized cards or do you normally just toss them? Um, I never really kept those oversized cards, but interested to see what everybody else did with theirs. And that's all we got for the product launch. So we're still waiting for more news every day. I'm sitting on pins and needles, waiting to see more cards, waiting to see what how this game is gonna play. I have no idea how this game is going to play, but I'm so stoked and so interested to know what are the rules. And we know spring 2023, the spring is, is when we're going to know how to play the game. Um, I would really love to know before that, but you know, it's just going to be wait and see. So leave a comment down below. Let me know. What do you want to see next? Do you want to see rules? Do you want to see more cards? You just want to see more artwork. What do you want to see next about Disney Arcana? Leave a comment down below. You know what? That's all we got for today. Thanks, everybody, for, for being here. We'll catch you in the next video. See you, everybody.